Hey all, in this Programming Reviews Programming Games video, we'll be taking a look at TIS 100. This game came really highly recommended to me, but I have to say I was a bit worried I'd hate it. If you look at the game on Steam, it's basically a game that looks like an MS-DOS prompt from 1994. I'm sure that's super exciting. But behind the MS-DOS 1994 looks hides a surprisingly interesting and sometimes very complicated programming game. In TIS 100 the goal is to repair, or rather reprogram, an imaginary computer system called the Tessellated Intelligence System 100. You inherit this mystery machine from your uncle who passed away, along with the operator's manual for the machine, which is represented by the game's actual PDF manual. The gameplay consists of writing code to solve a series of puzzles. As you complete enough puzzles, more open up for you to play. The way the puzzles work is you get some input values, which you must then process in some way in order to get the output the puzzle requires. This starts very simple. First, you only need to take an input and move it to the output, but it gets very complex towards the late game, where you even have to output some rudimentary pixel graphics. The programming aspect is quite interesting. Instead of simply writing sequential code like you might normally do, the program is split between different nodes. Each node is like a miniature computer. You can put code into multiple nodes, and it all executes in parallel. Each node is also quite limited. You can only have 15 lines of code in a node. That might not sound too bad, but the game essentially simulates assembly programming. This means that in order to do even the most basic thing, it tends to require more code than you might expect. And that is also one of the reasons why I was worried the game might be quite tedious. The game barely has any graphics or gameplay to speak of beyond simply writing code and solving puzzles. It's bordering quite dangerously on this feels like actual work territory. But the game does solve this and it does that by simply being different. Because the nodes are limited, it really forces you to think outside the box. And then, the nodes are also running in parallel. The limitations and parallel functionality of the nodes, it tends to force you to find novel solutions to the problems the game presents, and as you play the game, you kind of start building a better intuition on how to work with the unusual programming model. It's pretty similar to learning a real programming language in that sense. Now, while the novel programming model can be fun to figure out, it can also be a bit of a downside to the game. The game's programming somewhat resembles uh, something that's called assembly programming, but the parallel node system takes away some of the practicality. Assembly programming these days, it's, it's a pretty niche area. You would mostly use it for working with electronics or embedded systems, essentially on platforms which are very limited in terms of processing power. But other than this, the game does seem to represent assembly programming in a reasonably authentic manner. Now, I've not done any real assembly myself, but I spoke with several developers who have, and they all agreed that TIS 100 can be useful to show you at least some of the aspects of what it's like to work with real assembly code. But one of the biggest problems the game has for those who are just looking to learn about programming is that the learning curve is pretty steep. Some other games, like Human Resource Machine, for example, they also base their programming model on assembly. But those other games tend to include some kind of tutorials to help you get going. And TIS has nothing like that. It just throws you right into it, and it expects you to just figure it out. The manual does have a comprehensive list of programming commands, but it doesn't really poke you into the right direction if you don't really know how to start working on this thing. So in this sense, it resembles real programming perhaps a little bit too much. But then again, it does seem like it was designed for people who have done at least some programming rather than for complete beginners. If you've done some programming already, then the lack of a tutorial, it's not such a big deal. All right, let's talk about scores. First, is TIS 100 any fun? Mm, to be frank, TIS 100 is not so much a game as an unusual programming environment. 
yeah, it does present you with puzzles, but they are maybe a bit more like programming assignments. The game is pretty much just a text editor for writing code. I mean, there is a storyline, which you can learn more about as you progress through each puzzle, and it's actually kind of intriguing as well. There's some beeps and boops for sound effects, but there's no music whatsoever. And, well, the graphics, well, if you've used a Linux terminal or MS-DOS or something like that, well, that's pretty much what you get. Even though that doesn't sound particularly amazing, it does fit the game's concept. You know, trying to figure out how this old, weird computer you just kind of stumbled upon, how does it work? And even though the user interface is very bare-bones, it works very well and it's easy to use and understand. The puzzles themselves, they have a lot of variety to them. Often, you work with numbers and you do some computations with them, but there are some levels where you're given a simplistic graphics feature to use. Something that I particularly enjoyed was a puzzle where I had to draw out sort of like a line chart with the graphics system. It was a pretty fun and a somewhat practical challenge. The difficulty level on the puzzles does rise quite significantly over the course of the game. It kind of got to the point that even I grew a bit tired of it. But for those who enjoy working out the kinks of a limited system like this, there's definitely a lot of interesting challenges in the game. Despite getting a bit tired of the more complex puzzles, I did enjoy the ones leading up to that point. For the fun score for TIS100, I'm going to have to split this in two. If you're a programmer, the game gets a 4 out of 5 of fun. The game has a very interesting programming model, which gives you challenges you probably haven't had before. And learning how to work with the system, it can give you like real aha moments, and sometimes you almost feel proud of your clever and nice solutions to the puzzles in the game. However, if you're not a programmer or if you're just learning the very basics, TIS100 gets a 1 out of 5. It's very close to being as dry as actually just sitting down and trying to learn a programming language for real. And if the game had a little bit more guidance in the start to help you learn the ropes, I think it would get a 2 out of 5. In order to actually enjoy TIS-100, you have to have the patience to figure it out, and this can be difficult without previous programming experience, since the game doesn't really help you much with that. It might be about equally interesting to go learn a real programming language first, and perhaps come back to TIS-100 a bit later. But can you learn about programming by playing TIS-100? Now, the game does have a lot of real concepts. The assembly programming is reasonably authentic and uses somewhat realistic commands and storage mechanisms for data. You need to write code in a way that you might perhaps write it if you were writing actual programs. The parallel programming aspects also share some similar challenges as parallel programming in the real world. Before I played TIS-100, I was only superficially familiar with assembly. So if I saw some assembly code, I would recognize it as such, but I didn't really know much else about it. It had been a topic that I was interested in learning more about, but just kind of never got around to doing it. But after TIS-100, I feel like I could understand real assembly code at least a little bit better than I did before, and if I wanted to, I could probably learn real assembly programming a bit more easily as well. But the assembly programming in TIS-100 is not exactly one-to-one -one with real code. It does certain things a bit differently, and the node-based programming model is not really something that you would encounter in real systems. So TIS-100 gets a 4 out of 5 on practicality, with the disclaimer that the practicality mostly extends to those who want to learn the assembly language. It can definitely teach you some lower-level programming concepts and perhaps help with understanding how code can run and work together in a parallel environment as well. But the fact it uses assembly somewhat limits the practical applications of what you can learn here. I spent about 10 hours with the game and I found it quite enjoyable. Within that time, I finished most of the main puzzles, but the game also has another set of puzzles called TIS-NET, which are apparently even more challenging. So there's probably at least about 20 hours in there in total, depending on how experienced you are in solving the types of puzzles the game throws at you. Each puzzle is also ranked and scored against other players in an online leaderboard, so for those who enjoy tinkering with optimizing their code, there's plenty to do there as well. I would recommend TIS-100 to those who have done at least some programming before and are looking for something interesting to learn. Yeah, learn, not so much play. 
as, at least for me, the enjoyment from TIS-100 came more from learning how to work with the limitations of the system and figuring out new ways to make it do what I wanted. Somewhat similarly, how I enjoy learning new programming languages in general. If you have not done any programming before, I don't know if you'll find the game very interesting. If you're the type of person who can take something and figure it out on your own, or perhaps with some googling as there's definitely info and videos out there, then TIS-100 could be interesting for you. Otherwise, I would mostly just recommend this for those who have done some programming before. Okay, I hope you found the review interesting. There are more programming game reviews on the channel and coming in the future as well, so stay tuned if that's a thing you like. And for more details on the scoring criteria I use, check the description below the video. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.